between 11 to 22 November 2019, over 150 delegates from 43 states, one regional economic integration organization, three intergovernmental organizations, four international non-governmental organizations, and one technical advisor came to Pretoria, South Africa, to take part in the diplomatic conference for the adoption of the fourth protocol to the Convention on International Interests in Mobile Equipment on matters specific to mining, agricultural and construction equipment, also known as the MAC Protocol. Over 13 years, 13 long years, two independently written economic analysis, four sessions of a multi-party study group, two committees of governmental experts with more than 50 states represented, thousands of hours of legal and economic analysis by some of the most important academics and best practitioners in the field, of thorough consultations with private sector, of detailed negotiations with government officials and members of international organizations, after the involvement of about 4,500 companies through the working group, the sacrifice of the honeymoon of a magnificent legal officer who intends only to marry once, and after three Secretary Generals of UNITRA, after all of that, the day has come. Uh, the diplomatic conference starts today, and in two weeks, we, all of you here today, uh, and more to come, can make history by finalizing and approving a treaty that has the potential to become a game changer for international economic transactions. We realize the negotiation of a legal instrument such as a MAC protocol is a difficult task, which involves complex political and legal issues that require painstaking work and sometimes difficult compromises. Yet, we are confident that delegations will be inspired by the spirit of Ubuntu, our indigenous philosophy that it is often translated in the following words, I am because we are and that we will rise to, to the occasion through the de demonstrating flexibility, compromise and wisdom. Let us indeed make this our Ubuntu conference. Thank you again for nominating and directing it in South Africa. The MAC protocol is the latest component of the Cape Town Convention System. The Cape Town Convention System is one of the most successful private law international instruments. And one of the most clear advantages of this system is the idea of legal uniformity. And the legal uniformity is critical for predictability. What means legal uniformity in the case of, in the, case of the Cape Town Convention? Is the idea first of having a concept that is autonomous, that is uniform, that is international, of international interest. That means that your security interest is going to be recognized and enforceable in other countries <laughs> in cross-border transactions. The second idea is to have a body of rules, including creation, priority, and enforcement, that is applicable to this international interest. And finally, and extremely important, having an international interest that is entirely electronic, that create a clear provision of visibility for the security interest. This Cape Town system is an umbrella of general rules that is applicable to different sectors and categories of equipment, depending on the protocol. The MAC protocol is the latest component of this successful international instrument. Thank you. MAC protocol obviously focuses on mining, agriculture and construction equipment, which is essential for a number of uh, developing economies, particularly those in Africa that rely on agriculture as, as the key driver of, of their economies. We expect that those will be the countries that are the primary beneficiaries of, of this MAC protocol and their farmers and other users in these three industries will be able to benefit from new equipment that will be leased or financed at much lower rates that is the, that is the norm today. Over the two weeks, delegates discussed various open issues within the draft text, including the scope of application of the treaty, inventory financing, treatment of immovable associated equipment, rules on insolvency, amendments to the protocol, and the roles which various international organizations and states will play in ensuring the proper implementation of the instrument. It was my honor to introduce the MAC protocol to the Governing Council back in 2005, 14 years ago, 
And at that time, I believe that the benefits, both to producing countries and uh, buying countries, would be significant. Uh, the economic benefits create a win-win. And here, 14 years later, I could not be happier or prouder that we've included this protocol. This has been a really valuable protocol and a valuable experience. This will be wonderful for economic development in the developing world and across the whole world. It will bring finance to the mining, agriculture and construction equipment sectors. <laughs> and it will be um, uh, uh, of immense value to all countries who uh, ratify it and who are involved in it. At the end of the conference, the protocol was adopted. The Republic of Congo, the Republic of Gambia, the Republic of Paraguay, and the Federal Republic of Nigeria all signed the treaty on adoption, whereas more than 20 states expressed confidence in the future impact of the MAC protocol on global economic development across the mining, agriculture, and construction sectors, and declared that their own internal processes for signature were already under consideration. We are delighted that the protocol has been indeed adopted in Africa. Building on the legacy of the Cape Town Convention and its aircraft protocol, which were also adopted here in South Africa, in Africa. As I mentioned during my opening address, the importance of hosting this conference and the adoption of this protocol in Africa is very significant as the protocol holds great promise to stimulate development and to contribute to prosperous and thriving economies and societies through the mining, agriculture and construction sectors, which of course are key development drivers in the region. A critical component of expanding these sectors is of course the financing, leasing, importing and exporting of equipment used in these industries. More affordable financing and access to modern MAC equipment will allow producers in these sectors to optimize their productivity as well as profitability. I've also made reference, ladies and gentlemen, to how this protocol contributes to the broader global sustainable development agenda. In particular, addressing poverty and hunger and decent work and economic growth through industry, innovation and infrastructure as some of the key sustainable development goals of the UN. This is indeed the reason why this conference has attracted so much interest. The Pretoria Protocol has the potential to transform the lives of millions of people, particularly in the developing world. The possibility for an emerging farmer or an entrepreneur to obtain mining, agricultural or construction equipment that would otherwise have been beyond his or her reach will indeed be a game changer. We can also expect the same synergy between the protocol and our African continental free trade area. What a good coincidence. We are confident that the Pretoria Pro Protocol will eclipse the aircraft protocol in its economic value and in the impact that it will make in the lives of our peoples. We look forward to reap the benefits of the hard work done by all of you as delegates and observers and commend you, of course, and for taking up our shared responsibility to create a better life and a future for the generations to come. We have today before us a very fine piece of legal work, one which is comprehensive, internally consistent, and respectful with the wider system of the Cape Town constellation. A legal text that has fine-tuned the content of its sister protocols, that has removed a bit of the fat that remains, that has learned from the theoretical work done on and the practical application of the first version of the treaty, adopted now already one score minus two years ago. The treaty that we have finalized today is a piece of work where clarity is of the essence. 
It sets its objective so clearly and its message to users is so powerful that the legal certainty it creates will be the unstoppable reason of its certain success. The experts and delegates have managed to remove all doubts from those who will be ready to finance economic projects. They have disentangled the conundrum of cranes and machinery becoming part of the mountain or the land, for the first time showing the legal community that scrambled eggs can in fact be unscrambled. They have struck a balance to achieve collaboration from national authorities while yet preserving sovereignty and an equal treatment of creditors. They have provided guidance to lawmakers, explaining that the insolvency of a debtor does not pose a conflict between the debtor and its creditors, but rather between creditors themselves, and that before such inevitable conflict in a market economy, the sanctity of contracts must prevail, not for the good of this or that creditor, but for the very existence of credit. This text we are adopting has all the instruments to make the difference, to increase access to credit, to make it cheaper, and hence to make the mining, agricultural and construction sectors, generally so important for the global economy and particularly for developing markets, thrive and help countries grow. This instrument, because of the qualities mentioned and of the sectors, is going to make a difference. It is going to allow small and medium farmers and entrepreneurs to access a machinery and a technology that was before out of reach for them. It has the potential to empower the smaller businesses, which adequately cooperating together will increase their efficiency and productivity, taking that step up which makes the difference, allowing them to take control of their businesses and of their projects. It will no longer be about mere survival, now it will be about progress. Uh, um, the MAC protocol has the potential to benefit all the world. Um, please support the ratification and the further implementation. Uh, finally, well done to UNIDROI um, and the governments participating in the diplomatic conference. Um, may the MAC protocol become the big MAC benchmark.